Welcome to today's Missouri 4-H Quarantine Challenge. My name is Caitlin Edwards and I'm a 4-H Youth Program Associate from Clack County, Missouri. And today's topics are amphibians, reptiles, and arachnids. On today's agenda, our objectives are a brief overview of animal taxonomy, what are amphibians, reptiles, and arachnids, and a career connection with naturalist Colin Edwards. Next steps, share your challenge results on social media using the hashtag Mo4HQT Animal Encounters. Also, watch 4-H Animal Encounters with Martha Lafitte Thompson Nature Sanctuary to dive deeper into these topics. Those videos can be found on Facebook at Platte County Mo4H. First, we're gonna start with animal taxonomy. So referring back to the Missouri Mammal Zoo, animals are classified based on their characteristics at different levels. The system is called the taxonomy. On the left, in green, there are several groupings or categories that we use to divide animals, and they get more specific as you go down the list. Today, we're going to be talking about three classes of animals. Class arachnida, or the arachnids. Class amphibia, or the amphibians. And class reptilia, or the reptiles. The classes amphibia and reptilia are two classes in the phylum Chordata. Animals in the phylum Chordata share the characteristic of having a spinal cord or a backbone. Class Arachnida is one class in the phylum Arthropoda. Animals in the phylum Arthropoda share the characteristic of having an exoskeleton. First, we're going to start with amphibians or the class amphibia. Amphibians share certain characteristics with each other. They live both on land and in water, called being amphibious. They breathe with lungs, gills, or through their skin. They are ectothermic or cold-blooded. This means they have no constant body temperature. Their body temperature depends on their surroundings. They have moist, smooth, thin skin with no scales, fur, or hair, and they undergo a metamorphosis, meaning a transformation during their lives. And finally, most lay eggs in water. Amphibians include frogs, toads, and salamanders. The pictures you see are of an eastern tiger salamander, an eastern American toad, and a gray tree frog. Next, we have reptiles, or the class reptilia. Reptiles share certain characteristics with each other. The majority live on land or are terrestrial. They breathe with lungs. They are also ectothermic or cold-blooded. They have thick, tough, dry skin with scales that prevent desiccation and injury. Desiccation meaning the loss of moisture or water. And finally, most lay eggs on land with generally soft, leathery shells. Reptiles include turtles, snakes, and lizards. The pictures that you see are of an ornate box turtle a Great Plains rat snake, and an Eastern collared lizard. Herpetology is the study of amphibians and reptiles. Herp is the nickname for amphibians and reptiles. Missouri 4-H has a project area called amphibians and reptiles, and one of our project resources are the, is the Missouri 4-H Herp Watch, which I will share with you right now. It is on our website for anybody to look at and download. And then going down a few pages, you will see the Missouri Amphibian and Reptile List, where you can record the date you first see one in captivity and then the, first, the date you first see that animal observed in the wild. This is a great way to keep track of what amphibians and reptiles you encounter. Next, we'll head back and talk about how many species of herps are in Missouri. So there are 118 total species of amphibians and reptiles. There are 43 species of amphibians. This includes 26 frogs and toads and 17 salamanders. There are 75 species of reptiles. This includes 47 snakes, 17 turtles, and 11 lizards. Finally, 
we're going to talk about arachnids or the class arachnida. Arachnids share some common characteristics with each other. Generally, arachnids have two body parts, the cephalothorax, which is a fused head and thorax, and the abdomen. They also have two appendages, the chalicera, which function for feeding and defense, and the pedipalps, which also function for feeding, but also movement and reproduction. They have no antennas or wings. To adapt to living on land, arachnids have an internal breathing system like a trachea, or a book lung. They usually lay eggs, some are venomous, several are parasites, and most are carnivores. Arachnids are not insects or in the class Insecta. A tell telltale sign so that you can distinguish between the two is that insects have three pairs of legs for a total of six legs, while arachnids have four pairs of legs for a total of eight. Arachnids include not just spiders, but also ticks, mites, scorpions, and daddy long legs, or harvest men. The first picture you see is of a trombiculid mite, which are more commonly known as chiggers. Number two is a daddy long leg or a harvest man. Number three is the Missouri tarantula. Number four is a lone star tick. And number five is the striped bark scorpion. Next, I'm going to show you an interview I had with Colin Edwards, who is a naturalist at Martha Lafitte Thompson Nature Sanctuary. He's going to talk about his job as a naturalist and give some advice if you are looking to have a, an amphibian, reptile, or arachnid at your home. Hi, Colin. So the first question I have is, what are your main responsibilities as a naturalist? Uh, well, my number one responsibility is uh, education. So we have all sorts of educational classes out at the Nature Sanctuary. Um, and the responsibilities that go with that are that we have to design these programs and promote these programs and then, of course, teach them. So that's number one. Um, another really important thing is that I have to take care of the animals that we have on exhibit. Uh, most of the stuff we have at the Nature Sanctuary is reptiles and amphibians, though we do have a very large body. We have some fish, uh, things like that. Um, and then other things, since we are a small place, um, we're just a small little nature sanctuary, and there's a very small staff that goes along with that. So some of my duties are taken outdoors. So I get to do a little bit of trail work, basically keep the grounds um, in good condition for the public. Um, but that's the main duties. That's great. So the next question I have is, what do you like most about your work? Um, I pro probably teaching the classes is my favorite thing um, because no matter how many times you teach the same like Creek class or uh, mammal class, it's always different because it's always different people. It's a different experience. Um, and really you just get to have fun and talk about things you like to talk about. Nice. So how did you become interested in this field? Uh, well, I was always sort of interested in like animals and biology. I have a degree in biology. Um, but even with the nature sanctuary, I hadn't been out there in years, really. Um, I had gone to a couple classes when I was much younger. Um, but one of my friends was volunteering out there and sort of reintroduced me to the place. Um, and that sort of rekindled, uh, my interest in nature and like natural resource sciences, things like that. So, yeah. Nice. So, um, what kinds of skills abilities and personal attributes do you think are essential to the job of a naturalist? Um, I think first and foremost, the most important um, ability to have is to have some sort of organization. Um, since we're a really small place and again, really small staff, there is so, so, so many things you could be doing. And if you're not organized in some fashion, it could just be incredibly overwhelming. So I think 
being able to organize and prioritize um, what needs to be done is definitely the most important thing. Wonderful. Then, um, thinking about our topic for today, amphibians, reptiles, and arachnids, um, when caring for those animals, what is something you would recommend for people to do? Um, well, if you're interested in, say, getting an animal like that, I would say maybe coming out to a facility like ours and talking to us about what we do with those animals. Um, I mean, we get people who talk about, say, wanting to have like a turtle or something like that, but they don't really know what goes into that. Or say, again, with the turtle example, turtles live for like a really, 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 really long time. So a lot of people think it's like, oh yeah, it's a cute little turtle, but guess what? You're going to have that turtle for like maybe 60 plus years. So yeah, I would say come out to our nature sanctuary, Marshall P. Thompson Nature Sanctuary. Come talk to people like us who do take care of these animals. We can tell you the ins and outs all about it. Um, we can even give you an idea of what that cost and upkeep is going to be because animals sometimes are expensive. Um, but yeah, just come talk to people who are knowledgeable. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Awesome. So that was my interview with Colin Edwards, naturalist at Martha Lafitte Thompson Nature Sanctuary. And now I invite you to take on the challenge with us. The challenge is to draw an amphibian, reptile, or arachnid and share a picture of your drawing with us. If you can, find inspiration from an animal you encounter outside and include a picture of it with your drawing as well. Be sure to remember the characteristics of amphibians, reptiles, and arachnids because that's what makes them unique. To enter the challenge, post your entry to your Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat account using the hashtags Mo4H QT Animal Encounters, Mo4H, and Extend MU, so we can find your post or share it with us in the comments of the Quarantine Social Media Challenge Facebook post. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., a winner will be chosen and a certificate added to their post. Ready, set, go, and thank you for joining me today.